first in the series where we discover the extraordinary achievements of British amateur scientists. Today we feature Guy Hurst, who's become a bridge for amateur and professional scientists all over the world. Anna Grayson presents Science in the Attic. Today, we're at the exhibition meeting of the British Astronomical Association, which is the premier society in Britain and probably in the world. And Guy, of course, is the leading member. He's been given a medal, one of the BAA's highest honours. And believe me, nobody deserves it more than Guy Hurst. The unmistakable voice of Patrick Moore, himself an amateur scientist in the strictest sense. A man who's become a national institution and who's spent much of his life trumpeting the value of amateurs in science. And that's the aim of this series, to celebrate the work and unsung achievements of amateurs working in their own homes with no formal scientific qualifications and little or no funding. Our first subject and the object of Patrick Moore's high praise is Guy Hurst a senior bank manager by day and an astronomer by night. I, I work in a bank where, in fact I don't work in a normal branch you could say, where most customers would assume that all of us are cashiers who count money. Um, I actually work in a larger area office that's responsible for about 140 branches. Very stressful experience because I'm looking after more than 2,500 staff in those branches. They all have uh, difficulties and problems, and whenever that's the case, they ring me. So I get a lot of phone calls during the day which vary in sort of personal problems through to commercial problems. But I suppose astronomy is, is very much a release from that because it's a complete change for me when I get home. And actually going out observing, having worked in a hectic office all day, is incredibly relaxing. A, it's quiet, apart from the odd um, cat or dog that suddenly makes you jump when it's very peaceful normally. Uh, but also when you look up at the heavens, you, you relax, but you also perhaps realise just how insignificant you are. It's a fascinating thing to look at the night sky. But I think it, a feeling of inadequacy can come in because you're a sort of a single person in a huge universe. And I think that produces several thoughts and contemplations, really, which you never have time to have in a busy office. But Guy is no ordinary astronomer. He doesn't spend the lonely small hours staring through a telescope just for his own pleasure. Rather, his role is to record the observations of others. From his Basingstoke home, Guy logs and collates reports of sudden astronomical events and then verifies them. Meteor showers, comets and the exploding stars or supernovae. I first met Guy Hurst some years ago at the British Astronomical Association. Now I realised straight away I was in the presence of somebody whose position is unique. You see, there are many astronomers, professional and amateur, and someone needs to correlate the observations, particularly of the amateurs. And that's the role that Guy fulfills. And any discovery now comes through to him, and he takes it from there. Contact with professionals and amateurs all over the world, universally respected, and someone who can't be replaced. We I mean, remember also in the daytime, he is a busy bank manager. It really is quite amazing what he manages to do. Oh, well, end of another day, anyway, end of the week as well, so... Uh... Life at the bank's been pretty hectic today, but uh, we managed to get through. Nice to take a rest now and try and get back to doing some astronomy again. Looking to see if uh, it's cloudy. Ringing already, is it? Well, we got through the door. All right, Mark. Hello. Had a good day. Yeah. What's happening then? My sort of role in astronomy is to run a team of observers that actually look for sudden events in the sky, whether they be novae, comets, supernovae, and this has been running since 1976. Yeah. Well, having a night off. Not taking a night off, it's been a heavy day, but depends who rings up, doesn't it? Astronomy has its conflicts. Um, most astronomers will observe at unsociable hours. I think some people imagine that astronomers could never be married, but I am to a very loving wife. However, I do feel a great conscience at times. If I actually get to bed, the phone rings, and I personally have to go out and observe. Leave bed at sort of one or two in the morning, and probably not return for a few hours when I'm busily checking for discoveries. So it's a slightly unsociable 
hobby in that respect. But Anne Hurst did know what she was getting into when she married Guy. For Guy became struck with stars when he first visited her parents, who lived under the wide skies of Lincolnshire. Now, three grown-up children later, a purpose-built extension to their home serves as an office, housing piles of books, filing cabinets of astronomical records, and a computer, the hub of the operation, linked to a CD-ROM and a specialised video camera that's able to take pictures of the darkest patch of sky. As the evening goes on, the phone rings and emails arrive. I must check on the, the latest discovery because uh, most of these we need to look at a, a star atlas to make sure that the star that has been reported to us is completely new. Um, a lot of the, the books I have in here are quite useful in checking bright stars, but if we want to find out whether a faint star should normally be there, these days it's more useful to actually go for some more sophisticated atlas which is on CD-ROM. They can crowd um, some 16 million stars onto CD-ROM these days, so it's a case of calling a, a map up on the computer rather than see the paper one. Mind you, I have a particular personal preference for paper books as collector's items. Um, the one thing that's vital there when people ring is, is for them to be able to tell you precisely where they think they've discovered it. I've had cases of people telephoning me saying that uh, they saw something this morning and it was near the moon and that's all they can say. It doesn't give a very precise indication of where it is. In astronomy, we, as, as with a normal atlas of the world, uh, where we use latitude and longitude to describe where something is, in astronomy we have a very similar system, except we have called it right ascension and declination, but essentially it's a measurement of the vertical and the horizontal areas of the sky. Um, so if the people are able to quote that, that's uh, an even better bet. Um, so I just key in the positions, OK it, and I get an area of sky, then I can zoom in really really to a smaller area, and depending on how faint it is, I can get right down, um, probably to the limit of the largest amateur telescopes that are available today. So with a bit of luck, nobody's going to report something that's so faint I can't uh, find it on my computer. This particular picture I've just called up of NGC 3767, NGC New General Catalogue, shows a star should be there and it's possible to find out the name of the galaxy. Um, years ago, before the CD-ROM was around, it would have probably taken us several days of investigating more pictures to actually try and find out. Now, with a bit of luck, we can decide whether it's new or not within a few minutes of the telephone call. Guy has been receiving and checking sightings of southern phenomena in the night sky since 1975. Some are false alarms, but then some voices at the end of the line demand a faster response than others. There are many false alarms, and in my life, I've been responsible only for one. I met Patrick Moore um, perhaps 15 years ago. Uh, I remember a particular case in in January when it was incredibly frosty outside that he rang um, near midnight to tell me that he discovered a nova. I was observing a variable star, I'm not the only variable star observer, and in that field was something I didn't recognise, it was about magnitude 10. It could have been one of two things, it could have been a nova, it could have been an asteroid. I looked at my asteroid tables, it wasn't there, I thought it worthwhile to ring Guy just in case. So I went out in my pyjamas onto the lawn, which is probably not a good thing to do in uh, January when it's really incredibly cold, thought I could check this within minutes, and whilst I was out and couldn't see what he'd uh, reported to me, he realised that, in fact, the object had started moving and was actually a satellite. A very easy mistake to make, and decided he would telephone me back quickly to try and stop me getting out of bed, but this was too late. So he woke my wife up, and being a very good-natured lady that Anne is, she took the call, emerged in her nightdress, came all the way downstairs, also onto the lawn, uh, to tell me that it was a false alarm. And uh, it was a very strange experience, I suppose, being on the, the lawn uh, in this state in the middle of January on a cold and frosty night. I'm just going out into the observatory just to check to see if it's clear. Yeah. It can't be long. Okay. If it's clear, I'll be back quite quickly. <laughs> you might be not chink in the cloud. Oh, well, let's hope so. Room has been made in the Hearst modest Basingstoke garden for a large circular shed housing an impressive optical telescope. Just trying to get the padlock open. I have to keep these places secure these days because people have been known to try and break into them to cause 
Chapeau. I use a 17 inch reflecting telescope to check a lot of dis discovery claims uh, personally. Uh, if it's cloudy, I still use the team's efforts. I have a number of people who have rather foolishly volunteered to be woken up in the middle of the night um, so that they can check. And hopefully somewhere in this country where my team is, it will be clear. Um, one of the troubles uh, we have, though, in living in big towns is lots of street lamps stop us from seeing the faintest of stars. The sky is heavily light polluted. Uh, that's the biggest hazard. This uh, particular telescope is in an observatory, which at least stops stray light getting in from the um, street lamps. And what I'm going to do is just remove one panel of the roof, the little slit that I want to look through, and keep all the rest of the light out. The roof also uh, can be rotated. It's got um, a metal ring on which the top half of the roof uh, goes round on a sequence of wheels. During the course of observing, I've discovered a number of what we call variable stars. These are stars that um, haven't actually exploded to necessarily become a nova or a supernova, but have actually um, become unstable, and they vary in brightness. They, they, so maybe one night they're particularly bright, another night they go fainter again in relation to their uh, stars near them. Unbeknown to me, which is fascinating too, um, a, a person who was observing in Russia had actually discovered it as well, almost at the same time, without either of us knowing that. And for some years later, until finally it was published, neither of us knew that we were actually studying it. And uh, after it was published, we made contact with each other, so it was a rather <laughs> another way of actually making a friend through uh, a discovery. Anne? Anne? Just coming to bed. It's raining, so I'm not going to be able to get any observing done tonight. Yes, I'm not going to be able to do any observing after all. Well, I thought it would. That's a write off. Go to bed now. I told you you should have taken up fishing. Yes. More importantly, Guy has gained the total trust of professional astronomers such as Brian Marsden. And this has been of crucial importance when trying to... I'm Martin Mobley. I'm the current president of the British Astronomical Association. It's difficult to summarise Guy's contribution to amateur astronomy in just a few sentences, but uh, Guy has been working solidly uh, towards confirming amateur British discoveries for about the past 25 years. Guy's reputation now is so high in the astronomical field that when professional astronomers, particularly at the Minor Planet Centre and the Central Bureau in Boston, USA, where particularly when, when they get his uh, discovery claims, if it's got Guy Hurst's name on it, backing them up, they know that it's a real discovery. This award which uh, the British Astronomical Association, uh, through Martin Mobley, the president, um, has told me I'm to receive this year, um, I was absolutely stunned. I, th I think I always associated uh, people who receive awards with people who made major discoveries. He, he tells me that spending 25 years checking other people's discoveries deserved it as well, but I never expected to, to receive it. I was totally surprised by it. It took me several days to believe it was true. He's universally respected by all who know him, amateur or professional, and is eminently suited to be a recipient of the Goodacre Medal for his contribution to the progress of astronomy over many years. Science in the Attic was produced by Neil George. Tomorrow